for sure. If you if you get the experience firsthand, I think this is the main point to gain confidence in this technology. Hello and welcome everyone to a brand new episode of the Auto Tech Show. My name is Mark Babin and as always it's a pleasure to welcome you to this special episode recorded live here on the show floor at the IAA Transportation Show in Hanover, Germany. Today on the show I'm excited to welcome Kara Kirkfeld of Highlane, a German-based organization focused on providing the latest technology to help responsible companies achieve their goals of sustainability. They do this through making it possible to rent hydrogen powered trucks, a rental model that allows users to gain experience with new fleet technologies, all at minimum risk. Kara, welcome to the show. I stopped by your booth earlier. You got quite a lot going on over there. Uh, so I know you're busy. I appreciate your time. Really looking forward to your insights today though. Yeah, thank you, Mark, for the warm welcome, and I'm thrilled to be here today. Uh, yeah, it's an exciting time for us at Highlane, and being here at the ERA Transportation, um, and we presented with two vehicles. Um, yeah, and it's great to see the growing interest and the movement around sustainable solutions, and uh, yeah, we're looking forward to discussing how Highlane is helping to drive that movement forward, and thanks for having me. Do you see, in the conversations you're having, do you see that movement happening quite quickly? Companies are excited about transitioning to more of a sustainable model? Uh, yeah, I think so too. I, I think so, yes. And I think um, all over the ERR transportation, I, I had the opportunity to walk a little bit around in the last uh, two days and see how all companies have zero emission uh, mm -hmm. transport in their main portfolio. And it's a lot going on. Um, we have a lot of interest and a lot going on on our our stand, and I think that just just shows how the interest is growing and everybody is confronted with this. Yeah. So uh, I want to start today by looking at the the high costs associated with moving to a more sustainable model. Whether you're moving to EV or hydrogen power, just a more sustainable fleet operation. There's obviously high costs associated with that. For you, what are those primary barriers, financial barriers that you see companies are addressed with when they want to make that shift? Yeah, yeah, it's it's true, Mark. Um, that's something we ha we mm -hmm. all have to um, yeah, deal with. Um, I think the main financial barriers are the high purchase costs of the vehicles mm -hmm. at the moment, and um, but that's where we, with our uh, rental model, comes in because yeah, at the moment you also still need uh, funding for for the vehicles, and that's where our customers. Um, also profit from from us because we already got the funding um, for the vehicles mm -hmm. and uh, yeah I think it's we we get the companies the opportunity to access hy hydrogen powered trucks and without this massive investment at the beginning so they can experience it firsthand and as I already said just at a low risk and build confidence in in the technology and it's also a competitive advantage to have these cars in your fleet. And yeah, I think that's the main point here. The low risk part you mentioned there, I think that's a, a huge point. I want to just focus in on that, that low risk element because it is a risk for any organization moving to a different sustainable model somehow, whether they're moving to EV or hydrogen or plug-in hybrids, whatever they're moving to, there's a risk associated with it. The model that you guys have at Highlane with that rental-based concept, is that primarily trying to address that high risk and, and make them more confident in their decision? Yeah, yeah, for sure, that's exactly that. That they, we take the financial risk off their shoulders and um, the residual value risk. Um, so yeah, they only have to pay what they drive. So that's, that's our concept and they have also the flexibility with us. Um, and we are there to help them, to support them with planning the routes, uh, check if the infrastructure is in place, um, yeah, and our rate includes nearly everything. So you just don't only have the financial risk taken off your shoulders, you also have um, everything covered. So you don't really have to worry about anything. We, we provide the vehicle, we, um, um, yeah, we, the maintenance and the repairs covered, the insurance, and also we try to help with the access into to hydrogen through our close partnerships. And I think that's 
a good opportunity to to just start and get into the zero emission uh, concept. Do you find that fleet. people coming in are they're they're educated on the type of vehicle and the movement they want to make? Do, are they aware of what they're getting into, or is the rental through you part of their discovery? And I guess working with you part of that discovery to maybe fill some gaps they're unaware of. It depends on on uh, the company. Some are way into into the um, zero emission um, and the sustainable solutions and their way into it, but others are just at the beginning because they didn't really have the opportunity to start because of the high purchase costs and that's why they come to us and uh, yeah, we help, we help them to just start and get into it because I think it's a time where we need to start and yeah. So the, the technical side of the sustainable transport movement I think is quite interesting because there's, I mean, you walk around the show here, there's tons of technology going on uh, trying to address these these main challenges, innovation seems exponential. There's there's, I mean there's a startup section right near us here as well with tons of new technology that you see and you maybe never even thought of. And this is just continuing to, to exponentially grow. And I'm sure you guys see that in your space as well. From what you see at Highlane, what are some of the biggest technical uncertainties or things that you're still challenged by from a technical point of view when uh, you look at this climate neutral sort of movement? Um, yeah, I think the most uh, concerns mainly from, from the companies are the long-term reliability and um, yeah, the performance under real, con real world conditions like, okay, what's the range, what's about the refueling infrastructure, maintenance requirements and all these um, daily things they have to deal with and I think the key is just experience it, try it and uh, we from Highlane got uh, a lot, a lot going on already. We have the vehicles uh, on the streets since one and a half years with our customers, and it, it's getting more and more. Wow! And um, we already have been able to gather valuable experience with our customers, and I think the feedback is just the technology delivers and it's reliable, and the vehicles operate smoothly. And I think that's the main point that we see. Okay, it's it's working. It's, also that it's quite new into into the daily business for some companies but that we also have on the other side the feedback that it works and it's not just uh, a test and it's not a phase like mm, we have to see if it's working we know it's working and yeah. um, also the manufacturer stated range of like 400 kilometers for the cars um, has proven accurate and I think that's a great sign to see okay we're not just talking and trying, it's, it's, we can use it under real world conditions and also uh, maintenance and repair are handled by our service, service partners and, and we have already a well covered uh, workshop network all over Germany with certified employees and, and the existing refueling infrastructure in Germany is already good and we can use it and it's um, yeah, it's a good sign. Infrastructure is a question I wanted to ask about because when we look at the sustainable transport shift, a lot of uh, resistance and a lot of hesitation is on infrastructure to support. Maybe the vehicles exist, but the infrastructure is, okay, well, a fleet can't be down. A fleet always has to be running and they want to optimize that uptime. But with infrastructure, that can become a challenge. How does that relate from a technical point of view? Are you seeing those challenges met you said in the local market it is do you see that continuing to evolve and that should give people confidence to not be afraid of that infrastructure issue yeah it, it's true we need both we just can't just have the vehicles and know they are running without the yeah. infrastructure we, we need it's to not a petrol station we need yeah. the refueling stations but um, yeah, we see in, in Germany we already have a good network um, we have around 100 filling stations that are working and um, you can see there are a lot of in planning um, in this year and the next year they are coming and it's it's um, yeah it's getting more and it's true we are still in the stage of development and this can create logistical concerns uh, for the companies that they still have to carefully plan their routes it's other of course a different uh, different state but it's as I said, well developed already and uh, compared to the rest of Europe, if you just uh, look around. But um, yeah, that's why we are also working with the um, 
with the refueling infrastructure partners like HD Mobility and GP Jewel, Mint Hydrogen, Total Energies, and a lot of them are in the market, and we have close partnerships with them so we can provide the information they need. So where we need refueling stations, and yeah. where is it uh, where is it helpful to put more infrastructure and new filling stations? And I think this partnership is, is quite important uh, to get this ongoing. The the topic of confidence comes to mind when we speak about this because I think with with your model especially, you're trying to give people the confidence that this is a shift that can work for them. Otherwise, why try? But the the rental idea is kind of cool because or subscription models and rentals where if you wanted to try a car, you would maybe rent that car, take it for a test drive. Establishing that confidence is, is key for what you guys do, right? And I guess you try to meet those confidence points at every opportunity. Yeah, for sure. Um, that's what we always say, just try it. And it's um, for sure, if you if you get the experience firsthand, I think this is the main point to gain confidence in this technology. And also, we are there to support them. We just don't leave them alone. That's what what we do. We just don't provide the vehicles. We work closely with Their our support. customers. Yeah, to ensure they have the guidance and the technical support uh, with our partners during the rental period. So we're still there, whether it's helping with infrastructure or training or ongoing maintenance, we are still there. And I think this is also a good point to gain the confidence you need at the beginning. I'm curious what happens after a rental period. So like, let's say someone's wanting to learn more about how they could optimize their fleet with uh, with, with hydrogen vehicles or, or a sustainable vehicles fleet management of some kind and they, they take a, a rental from you, they experience it. How does the conversation typically go? You've worked with them at this point to answer the questions and work with them on a technical point of view, like you said, but what what is in their mind after that rental period? Are they going, I still need to think about it, we need to optimize, I'm ready to buy? Like, how does that work? How does that conversation work for you? Um, so, for at the beginning, the rental periods are not just only a few months, they're mainly between four to six years. So we are um, at the moment we are at the point that the first uh, that the first customers have experience since a year, a year and a half, and we are getting there like okay, now we got one car, or some customers al already got uh, four up to four cars or more, and now we are trying okay, what's the next steps, and we want to try to go the way with them just don't leave them alone and say okay now now you can look here's the, here's <laughs> the like, keys yeah. yeah here's the keys just to get forward and getting more trucks together on the street because it's not only just to test it out with us the rental period is like a long-term um, collaboration between us and our customers and to keep in touch and get more vehicles together on the street because it's not only just for a short short time I think they also can um, can scale up with us and not only just take one or a few vehicles. I think the scalability is where we need to go in the next step and uh, get the decarbonization um, forward. Yeah, because I think regulatory changes continue to come and, and we see that ongoing um, with environmental groups wanting to push that as far as possible. The scalability for what you're offering fleets and operations and businesses, I guess, helps them achieve those regulatory compliance. For sure, yeah. That's that's our goal, the goal of our customers, and that's in the same also our goal, yeah. You want to meet those. From, from your company's point of view, you're essentially just trying to help that movement forward by giving companies the chance. Yeah, for sure, yeah. We are, we are providing the vehicles and everything around them just to make it easier to also scale up and not just only stay where you are. Yeah. In a number of different industries, we see this value in collaboration, and you touched on you're working with companies in that collaborative way, in that supportive way. Is that the way forward when we look at this sustainable movement, that we need those collaborations to be there in order for change to happen efficiently and, and reap that, reach that neutrality in, in climate change? I think, yeah, it's absolutely essential. It's uh, like no single company can tackle the complexity of, of the transition alone. So um, I think it's re it requires a collective effort from different sectors. And we at High Lane strongly believe in the power of collaboration, whether it's w working with the vehicle manufacturers, 
or with the refueling providers and especially um, the collaborations between governments and private companies and also with us like the governments can provide funding or regulatory support and the private companies um, in the case of building infrastructure um, can build it and operate the stations that we need and um, also the manufacturers can get we need the vehicles, they, they have to bring them, yeah. so we can bring them on the street and I think it's a, a close collaboration between all of us together and we can provide the information, okay, what kind of cars and um, where is infrastructure most needed and um, how it should involve. And I think it's really essential to have these collaboration to get this forward. Are organizations you're speaking to open to that type of collaboration? Is that something that, that they are accepting of and they understand that that's how this works or are there some companies that just go we have our own system we want to deal with it on our own leave us to it i think a lot of companies are open-minded because everybody sees okay we have to work together because otherwise we maybe have we have vehicles but we don't have any stations or and i think we are in between them to to just connect um connect all parts yeah. all parts to yeah to get forward. So I guess you're, you're trying to essentially be the person connecting the puzzle pieces to allow those collaborations to take place for companies that want and want, are willing to accept that sort of collaborative development in their success. Yeah, for sure, yeah. And I think we are, um, we are, we, we are, um, we are special with our rental model. Yeah, you can, you can sell these vehicles for sure but um, to rent it and to get easier into the market and have this low risk entry into the, these um, sustainable solutions, I think it's, it's kind of special and kind of important. Yeah. Can I ask a question about your fleet of vehicles in particular? So you've got fleet being used by companies um, for long periods of time, you know, four, five, six years. How are they managed? Do they manage that vehicle's fleet efficiency on their own or are you helping them through that process because they're dealing with a whole new concept of maintenance and and logistics and and uh, fleet management and route management are they uh, are they okay with all like you're, you're helping to support all those elements with them because it's new for them and and they're accepting of these new ways that business has to be done for them yeah yeah for sure and I think they're really thankful for that for that support because um, yeah, at the beginning it's okay, what kind of routes uh, can we use, where's the infrastructure that we need, where can we fill up, and um, that's the beginning and the step one, like, okay, where can we use the cars or, or the vehicles, and um, after that, yeah, then we get to the point, okay, and then it's maintenance or sometimes some repairs or everything, and then we're still there to show them, okay, yes your partner where you can go to and uh, if there are any questions we are there and um, I think they are also really really thankful for that and um, yeah happy for the support they get from us. Yeah I think that's that's key and that's what makes it success in what you do is having that sort of relationship building experience with them because it just gives them more confidence down the road as well so yeah, I think you guys are certainly I like this rental model a lot I've spoken to a few people about it's it's like test driving their future and I think that's really cool with how you guys are doing it as well so um, yeah I wish you guys the best of luck at the show thank you so much for your time today great insights I, I love this conversation um, but yeah I wish you guys the best week here thank you Mark for having me and yeah I wish you also a successful and good week here thank you very much and for everyone watching and listening to this episode of the Auto Tech Show, thank you so very much for being with me today. Hopefully you've learned a lot about what Highlane are doing. If you have any questions about what they're doing, head down to the podcast notes below. You'll find a, a web link to, to their site as well as to Carrie. You can ask questions and maybe start conversations. You never know where those will lead. So please feel free to do that just in the comment section down below. But with that, we'll leave everyone to a fantastic day wherever in the world you may be. From IAA here in Hanover, we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.